Though not a Vanderbilt by birth, Alva Erskine Smith Vanderbilt Belmont must be mentioned. Born January 17, 1853 in Mobile, Alabama to a wealthy Southern family, Alva became aware of at a young age that girls and women were looked down upon by boys and men. Alva would respond to any boy teasing her for being a girl by beating up the boy in question. She nearly killed the boy over such teasing. By her own admission, she was a horrible child deserving every punishment her mother gave her. After the American Civil War, Alva's family had lost their fortune and were living in New York City. Alva knew she needed to marry someone wealthy to regain status. That someone became William K. Vanderbilt. Alva thought Willie, as she called him, wonderful. He was handsome, strong, and most importantly, rich. They married in 1875 and have three children, a daughter named Consuelo, and two sons named William K. Jr. and Harold Sterling. Despite her marrying a Vanderbilt, Alva still felt she and her husband were being ignored by New York City society. She particularly resented the fact Mrs. Astor, the queen of New York society, had not invited Alva and her husband to one of Mrs. Astor's balls. Mrs. Astor did not like new money families, such as the Vanderbilts, who thought they could buy their way into high social status. Alva decided to hold her own ball on March 26, 1883. She would invite 1,000 people, all decorated in elaborate costumes, to her and William's mansion at 665th Avenue in New York City. Mrs. Astor had to ask for an invitation. The ensuring success of the ball, with it being reported in every New York paper, made sure Mrs. Astor never forgot Alva and the Vanderbilts ever again. Alva was only getting started. After William H. Vanderbilt died, leaving William K. an estimated $65 million, Alva started spending that money. Jewels, artwork, and the largest yacht in the world at that time, named after herself, were all acquired. Their marble house, an opulent summer home made out of marble, in Newport, Rhode Island, was built. She made herself notorious with her my way or no way attitude. She shocked her class when she did something unheard of in 1895. She divorced her husband. Divorces did not happen. Separations did. But Alva was not common. She intended to do things her way, especially if she was the first to do it. The reason for the divorce was William K.'s supposed adultery. Some sources claim he hired a woman to pretend to be his mistress just to give Alva an excuse to divorce him, due to their marriage growing loveless. Later that same year, she forced her daughter Consuelo to marry the Duke of Marlborough. Alva threatened to shoot Consuelo's real love if she refused to marry the Duke. Alva herself married the following year to one Oliver Hazard Perry Belmont, one of William K.'s old friends. Son of a wealthy banking family, Alva would still live a life of luxury. As quickly as she turned the world of high society upside down, redefining the scales of grandeur and expenditure within, she walked away from it. A high society was glad to see her go, only to become horrified when she became a suffragist. After Oliver Belmont's death in 1908, Alva threw herself into the women's rights and votes for women movement. In 1909, she opened Marble House for a suffrage symposium, with herself being a headlining speaker. That same year, she created the Political Equality League to get votes for politicians who support suffrage. In 1912, she led the Political Equality Division in the Women's Vote Parade in New York City. In 1916, she announced Paul established a National Women's Party and organized picketing in front of the White House. She would be president of the NWP until her death and would purchase a headquarters for the party in Washington, D.C., which is now Belmont Paul Women's Equality National Monument. Alva Belmont would pass away January 26, 1933. At her funeral, her casket was carried with female pallbearers at St. Thomas Episcopal Church. She is buried with Oliver Belmont at Woodlawn Cemetery, New York City. A fascinating and iron-willed woman, Alva left her mark on the Vanderbilts, the Gilded Age, and ultimately, American history.